Our lecturer for today is Marinette C. Soriano, graduate of the Bataan Peninsula State University, taking up Masters of Arts in Science and Mathematics Education at Chiang Kai-shek College, teacher too at Jose Abad Santos High School, Senior Department. In this video, matututunan natin ang iba't ibang astronomical phenomena na na-observe ng ating mga ancient astronomers at kung paano ang different astronomical phenomena na ito ay makakatulong sa atin at nakatulong sa kanila para matibang ang kanilang early ideas about the position and the shape of the Earth. We have our visuals here para mas maintindihan nyo ang lesson natin. Okay, simulan na natin ang lesson natin tungkol sa ancient astronomy. Ano nga ba ang ibig sabihin ng astronomy? Astronomy is the branch of science that talks about motion and relative positions of heavenly bodies. So what are the different astronomical phenomena that is observed by our, our ancient astronomers before the advent of the telescope? First, we have the sunrise and the sunset. Ano bang ba naobserbahan nila tungkol sa sunrise at sunset? So, gumamit sila ng tinatawag na gnomon. It's a primitive sundial para makita nila ang position ng sun base sa shadow na nakakast niya sa ground. And according to the ancient astronomers, lagi nilang naobserbahan na the sun always rises from the east and then sets on the west. Another phenomena is the solstice. What is solstice? Solstice is... An event either of the two times in the year, that's June and December, when the sun reaches its highest or lowest point in the sky at noon and marked by the longest and shortest days. Uh, solstice happens every June 21st and December 21st. So in this visual, makikita ninyo ang path ng ating sun during the June 21st solstice. That's the red line. And the de December 21st, that's the... Uh, green line. So this is a clearer visual of winter solstice and the summer solstice. Kung titingnan ninyo, sa summer solstice, mas mahaba ang ating daylight kasi mas mahaba ang path ng ating sun. Pero sa winter solstice, mas konti ang daylight natin kasi mas konti lang yung path ng ating sun. Another phenomenon is the moon phases, the changing of the moon phases. So moon is also called a satellite. So it will take about 27 days, 7 hours and 43 minutes to complete one full orbit around the Earth. And it takes about 29.5 days naman to complete one cycle of changing of phases from full moon to another full moon. So, as you can see in this slide, magkakaroon tayo ng full moon dito sa point A kasi hindi na nabablock ni Earth ang sunlight coming from the sun. So, meron tayong tinatawag na gibus at saka crescent. Yung gibus, siya yung malaking part na uh, mas maraming sunlight. Yung crescent naman, uh, kasi konti na lang yung part ng moon na may sunlight. So, meron tayong tinatawag na waxing gibus o mas lumalaki ang part na nagkakaroon na maraming sunlight sa uh, moon at waning gibus o yung lumiliit naman yung part na sunlit. Next phenomena is the eclipses. So, eclipse is an astron astronomical phenomena that occurs when a celestial body such as a moon or a planet moves into a shadow of another celestial body. So, we have the solar eclipse. So, ang tatandaan lang natin pagdating sa eclipses is the position of the sun, the moon, and the earth. In this uh, uh, visual, makikita natin na nasa gitna si Moon at nagkakas siya ng shadow sa Earth. So, solar eclipse occurs when the Moon passes between the Sun and the Earth and the Moon fully blocks the sunlight coming from the Sun. It happens during New Moon and occurs twice every three years and lasts for few minutes. So, kung titignan ninyo sa ating visuals, uh, meron tayong part ng moon na yung shadow niya ay very dark and the other part naman na hindi masyadong dark. So, this darker area, we call this the umbra and the lighter area, we call this the penumbra. If you are positioned on the earth, uh, exactly here where, where the umbra 
um, landed, magkakaroon tayo o makaka-experience tayo ng total solar eclipse. So, next eclipse is the lunar eclipse. Sa lunar eclipse, kung makikita naman ninyo ang position ng ating um, tatlong celestial body, so we have the sun, the earth, and the moon. So, nasa gitna si earth at ang nagbablock ng uh, sunlight ay si earth at nagkaka nagkakasya ng shadow sa moon. So, lunar eclipse occur when the moon passes into the shadow of the earth and it involves a full moon. It can be partial lunar eclipse or a total lunar eclipse. It can also last for about an hour. If you look in this visual, yung ating moon ang nagkakaroon ng umbra, uh, the darker shadow on the moon, and the penumbra. So now we're going to discuss about the different motions of the Earth. So we have the motion of the heavenly bodies, but before that, pag-usapan muna natin kung ano ang constellation. Constellations are group of stars na ang mga names nila ay assigned by the different Greeks, Babylonians, and Egyptians. It also serves as navigational aids. So, kung titingnan natin, meron tayong uh, tinatawag na celestial sphere. Ano ba yung celestial sphere? Ang Earth daw natin ay um, nababalutan ng isang celestial sphere. So, etong ating celestial sphere, meron din siyang tinatawag na celestial equator at uh, north celestial pole. At sa north celestial pole, makikita si Polaris. Siya ang kilala natin na North Star. So, uh, talking about the different motion of heavenly bodies, we have diurnal, uh, annual, and the precession of the equinoxes. So, pag tinatabi natin diurnal mo motion, um, it's the apparent daily movement of the stars across the sky due to Earth's 24-hour rotation. So, sa madaling sabi, diurnal motion is daily motion due to Earth's rotation. Stars also trade diurnal orbits or arcs centered on the north and the south celestial poles. So, kung titignan natin dito, um, kapag ka, ifo-focus natin ang ating camera sa movement ng mga stars at tayo ay nasa northern latitude, ganito ang star trail na makikita natin. Pero kung tayo naman ay nasa equator, ganito ang star, star trail na makikita natin. Pagka tayo naman ay nasa North Pole, ganito naman ang itsura ng ating star trail. So, again, yung trails ng stars ay depende sa ating diurnal motion na tinatawag. So, aside from diurnal motion, we also have the annual motion. So, from the term annual, ito yung motion ng ating uh, stars due to the Earth's revolution. Kung titignan natin, ito yung ating mga uh, constellations, yung group of stars, at... Uh, Dahil sa Earth's revolution or sa ating uh, annual movement, ito yung different uh, position ng sun, ng sun towards the different constellation. For example, sa March, ang sun natin ay nakafocus towards Pisces. Sa June, ang sun natin ay nakafocus naman towards Gemini. September, it's towards Virgo. And December, nakafocus siya towards Sagittarius. So, meron din tayong tinatawag na another motion, the precession of the equinoxes. So, precession is the slow movement of Earth's axis towards another axis. If you look at the visual, this red part, eto yung alam natin na tilt ng ating Earth o yung, ating, yung Earth's axis. Now, kung titingnan ninyo, ang Earth's axis natin nag rotate pa sa isa pang another axis. So, that's what we call the precession. So, according to the data, magkakaroon tayo ng complete revolution ng precession after 26,000 years. So, yung kilala natin na North Pole natin, uh, North Star na si Polaris sa panahon na to, hindi siya yung dating North Star panahon ng mga Egyptians nung ginagawa nila ang pyramid. Ang North Star nila noon ay si Tuban. Again, precession occurs every 26,000 years. Earth's axis of rotation complete a circle. So, this is our North Star now. And in the future, it will be the Vega, yung ating North Star.
Before the advent of the telescope, meron na rin iba't ibang planet na na-discover ng ating mga ancient astronomers. So we have Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn. So Mercury is the closest to Sun, that's the smallest and the fastest planet, taking only 88 days per revolution. Ito naman si uh, Venus, Earth's twin or tinatawag nating evening star, it rotates rotates clockwise or backward. And then we have Mars, the red planet. So ang next naman natin, yung pinakamalaki natin na planet, that's Jupiter. So yung surface na planet, hindi natin siya nakikita kasi it is shrouded by a thick clouds of hydrogen and uh, helium, the two lightest element natin. At yung pinakalas naman natin, si Saturn. So kilala-kilala niyo siya kasi siya yung uh, planet natin na may dalawang rings sa kanilang equator. Okay, so natutunan na natin ang tungkol sa ancient astronomy. Again, astronomy is the branch of science that talks about the relative position and the motion of the different heavenly bodies. At nalaman natin na ang ancient astronomy, yung mga ancient astronomers natin, nagbabase lang sa kung ano lang ang kanilang mga observation. At ito ang mga different astronomical phenomena na na-observe nila. So we have the sunrise and the sunset, yung solstice natin o yung may panahon na konti lang ang uh, maikli lang ang araw o mahaba ang araw, yung moon phases natin tulad ng new moon, full moon, yung ating eclipses na solar eclipse at lunar eclipse, diurnal motion na nakabase sa uh, daily motion ng ating Earth, annual motion na nakabase naman sa revolution ng ating Earth, at yung precession of the equinoxes, o nalaman natin na yung ating Earth's axis ay nagro-rotate pa pala sa another axis. Sa susunod na lesson natin, matututunan naman natin kung papaanong yung different astronomical phenomena na na-observe ng ating ancient astronomers ay nakatulong sa kanila para mapatunayan kung ano ba talaga ang shape at position ng ating Earth sa universe. Hi! Kung sa tingin ninyo kami nakakatulong sa inyong pag-aaral bilang estudyante at kung kami nakakatulong sa inyo bilang mga magulang at mga guro, please do subscribe to our channel. We wanted to reach as many as possible. And in exchange, we will commit ourselves, our time, and little resources to create more videos na makatutulong para sa kinabukasan at maayos at mabisang pag-aaral ng bawat estudyante sa ating bansa.